There was a man during the time of our Salaf named Abu Bakr al-Ansari, rahimahullah alayhi. He was also known as Qadi al-Maristan. He was known as a very pious man of Mecca. He was known for his taqwa. He was a man who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a man who tried to always distance himself between himself and Allah's anger. One day he was out in the streets of Mecca and he's telling his own story of his life. He said, one day I was in the streets of Mecca. I was hungry and I was looking for some food. I hadn't eaten nothing, it was poor, mesquite. And he said, I found a bag with a, a very expensive pearl necklace in it. But it didn't belong to him. So he tied it up, took it home for safekeeping in case the owner comes. And he went back out in the streets looking for his food. Later on, he heard a man calling out that he had lost a pearl necklace and he was offering a reward, a large reward for whosoever would find it for him. So Abu Bakr came to the man, he said, look, I've found a necklace, but you need to describe it to me so I can know whether this is yours or not. He said the man described it perfectly. So he went and got it and gave it to him and the man was trying to pay him the reward. But Abu Bakr was refusing because he's saying to the man, I did not do anything for this. I didn't earn it. I'm giving you back what belongs to you. Therefore, I do not feel right taking sustenance because of it. And you know how we are as Muslims. We argue back and forth. No, take it. No, I'm not taking it. Not taking it. Take it. No. Eventually, Abu Bakr just said no and he walked away. He refused. I'm not taking this. No. I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep what belongs to you. Later on, Abu Bakr said that he realized that he could not no longer live in Mecca. He couldn't find a way in Mecca. He couldn't find his sustenance. He couldn't find work. So he decided to get on a ship and go somewhere else, is what Allah says. If you can't make it somewhere else, the earth is big, go somewhere else. So he got on a ship to go somewhere else and a big storm came and crashed the ship. And many people on that ship died. He said, I was fortunately able to grab a piece of driftwood and the wind blew me and blew me and blew me to an island. And when he got to that island, he looked for the people. He couldn't find them, so he saw that there was a masjid. He went and he sat down and began to recite the Qur'an. And his qira was known to be very beautiful. And the people of this island started to hear this beautiful, melodious recitation of Qur'an. They went to see who it was and they found Abu Bakr in the masjid reciting. And they said to him, you know how to recite the Qur'an beautifully. Will you teach us and our children how to do this and we will pay you and give you a place to live. He agreed and they started to pay him. He had a home and he did this for a while. And then one day he was sitting in the masjid reading some of the pages of the Qur'an that they had laying around in the masjid. And they asked him, you know how to read and write? He said, yes, I know how to read and write. None of them knew how to read and write. They said, teach us and our children how to read and write and we will increase your salary and pay you even more. So they began to increase his salary, pay him even more. And he stayed with them for a while. Then came a time where he decided, you know, I've been here long enough. I want to move on to the next position in life. Move on somewhere else. And they realized that he was going to leave. And they didn't want him to leave. So they said, we have to keep him here. So they devised a very good plan to keep him here. They said, look, let's just get him married. We get him married, he's going nowhere. So there was a girl who was known to be one of the most beautiful, pious, from the most pious family, girls that had just been orphaned. She had recently been orphaned. She had no wali. So they tried to get him married to her. He refused. And again, the haggle went back and forth. Yes, no, yes, no, yes. And finally he gave in. He said, okay, I'll marry the girl. The nikah was arranged, the girl was brought in, and Abu Bakr said, as I started to look up from her feet, and up and up, and I got to her neck, and his head dropped and he began to cry. Now, the girl thought that it was because she was ugly. So she started crying, and turned away, and the people were shocked. Oh my God, this pirate, you just embarrassed this girl. This is the best one we have. You've just broken her heart. He said, it's, no, it's not because of that. He said, the reason I'm crying is because on her neck is a necklace that I have recognized. I found this necklace in the streets of Mecca one day and I gave it to a man. And they started to shout, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. They said, her father was the owner of this necklace that you gave it to. And we used to hear him talking about this man that he met in Mecca who was one of the most pious and righteous Muslims he had ever come across in his life. And we used to hear him openly making dua to Allah for you to be married to his daughter. And here you are. 
And he got married to her and he had children and he became very affluent. She died, his children passed away, but he ended up selling the necklace for a very large amount of money. And he was explaining this as to how he became a very wealthy man in this place. You see, when Abu Bakr al-Ansari was being tossed about on that driftwood in the ocean, I'm sure he couldn't understand the plan of Allah. He didn't realize what was happening. Little did he know that even though he had a plan, Allah also had another plan to answer that father's dua. And Abu Bakr was doing nothing but being led towards that destination by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Abu Bakr had a plan and Allah had a plan. And maybe Abu Bakr didn't see it, but it came to be just the way it was meant to be. You see, that's, that's how life is sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't look like it's going right. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan. Hmm.